So this is a quick and easy guide on how to get your original Xbox controller working again on your PC, Xbox One, or Xbox 360. Now you're going to need to do a little bit of soldering and you're going to need to buy a dev board called the TNC 4.1, which I am showing you right here. And you're also going to want to get in either a USB adapter, which I've linked in the video description, or I'm going to use this burnt out Xbox and use the controller port as my adapter. Now when it comes to the TNC 4.1, it's actually a pretty powerful board. It could emulate full systems like Game Boys, Nintendos, I think even Super Nintendos. So we're not really using it to a full potential here. So the price may seem a little steep for $40 to $50, but I had one lying around. Now again, you're going to need a adapter. Here's the pinout breakout of what an Xbox controller is. So I used that earlier to make an adapter for the Xbox to plug in USB to the original Xbox. Now here is the USB adapter soldered to the TNC 4.1. Now we're not going to be soldering a USB adapter to it, we're going to be soldering an Xbox adapter to it. Now I've got my soldering station here set up to 250 degrees. You can go up to 300 and not really worry about burning out the tinsy. Now if you happen to have a burnt out Xbox lying around, you can just steal a port out of here and solder it into the tinsy, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to be using this motherboard in a later video and I'm actually going to be stealing the RAM off this board and upgrading uh, another motherboard with it but that's for a different video. So here you actually don't need to take out the whole motherboard and power supply like I'm doing here. Now I think it's a Torx 8 bit that the Xbox uses, but it's pretty simple to disassemble the whole thing. Now to get the Xbox controller port, it's really just two screws right at the top there. And then you can just pop out the ports and you don't have to disassemble the full Xbox to get to it. Now, if you notice, the color coding is the exact same as USB. Now, yellow is not used. Now, all I'm going to do here is snip the end off and get the wires ready. Now, if you're going with the adapter I've linked in the video description, you're going to do the same thing. Just snip the USB end off and get the wires ready for soldering. Now again, you're going to want to have some solder and some flux. So I'm not going to do a guide on how to solder. I assume you know how to do that. Now the yellow wire isn't used in this video. So just be aware that if you're wondering what that's for, it's for features that just weren't added onto the Xbox. It's for a clock, I believe, but I don't think any device was used. Now I do have wire strippers, but the wires are actually too small and they don't work. So I'm just applying a little bit of pressure and stripping the wires this way. I'm gonna dip all of them into a little bit of flux. I'm gonna twist the ends though so they don't burr on me. So I'll just dip them into the flux a little bit here and there we go. So again, I'll show you, we're going to be soldering onto the five pins that you see here. Now I've color coded them, I've included all these pictures in the download link in the video description. But you can see here you just want to apply a little bit of solder, a little bit of heat, and away you go. Now try to make sure that your solder is nice and clean so you, nothing shorts out. It's pretty easy, but if you're not that familiar with soldering, it could be a little difficult, so. Now it's been a while since I've soldered too, so this is not the cleanest job I've done. So I'm glad it's only four wires I've got to solder. It's one red, one black, and then one white and one green. 
So it goes red, white, green, and then black. The last two pins on the teensy can be either soldered too, but I like to do it all in a row and keep things nice and clean. Now I bought this teensy board about six, seven months ago, and I haven't figured out anything to do with it. Now I did want to start off with doing an emulator for a Game Boy, but the parts haven't shipped in yet, so that'll be coming down the road. But this is pretty easy going, and I'll get you familiar with your Teensy board if you haven't used one before. I had the Teensy 2.0++, plus, which if you're really a go-getter, you could hardware flash your PS3 with it. Once you've got everything soldered up, extract the folder or the file that I've linked in the video description and you're going to have everything that you need. Now to get our computer properly set up, we're going to install the Adreno IDE first. We're going to take note of where it's installing to. I'm just going to copy the folder location. We're going to need that later on. So this should only take a couple minutes to install, if that. Then we're going to install the Teensy Adreno application. This is going to let our computer recognize the Teensy board when we plug it in. So again, just double click and install it like any other application. So again, this should only take a couple minutes to install. Once it's finished installing, you, you can see the Adreno folder I have here. So what you want to do is open up File Explorer and either paste over or just navigate to where you install the Adreno IDE application. So I'm just pasting over where the install folder was and paste and enter. Now with that, I'm going to open up the Adreno folder and copy over these two to the install location. Now our computer is all set up. Now we're going to go back to the download folder and open up the Xbox. And we want to plug in our Teensy. Just remember to hold down the button and then plug in the USB while well, it's already plugged into your computer. Now a LED should just stay on solidly. Now we're going to open up the Xbox file, just like so. Now first things first, you're going to go to Tools and make sure you have the Teensy board selected, just like so. And you also want to select, not Serial, but X Input. Now this is all you really much need to do. Click the check mark to verify. Now if you have any errors here, just make the Teensy board is in download mode. So unplug and hold down the button and plug back in. Now for me it's prompting no errors. Now we're going to want to upload by clicking the arrow. And once that's complete, that's pretty much it. So we're going to test it out. And you can see, look, it's already being recognized. Plug it back in. So again, this video is pretty simple. It's only four wires that you really need to solder and maybe a little disassembly of an Xbox, but it actually does work. It'll get your Xbox controllers working again if that's what you want it to do. It'll work on any PC, Xbox 360 or Xbox One, anything that will recognize an Xbox 360 controller. Now, the Teensy board is a pretty powerful board, so it's not really using it to its full capabilities. I will probably be using this board later on in another video on how to turn a Teensy board into a Game Boy or a Super Nintendo. So stay tuned for that, but hopefully this helps you out and throw a like and subscribe.